Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and the world. This is TMJ4 News at 430. Welcome back. Today was supposed to be the first day of Festa Italiana. The annual event is held on the Summerfest grounds, but this year, the celebration of Italian heritage is put on hold, promising to return in 2021. Yes, I decided to get in festive clothing oh. if we're going to be talking about our festivals here, all right? Next time, tell me what we're going to do. A, the uh... self-proclaimed city of festivals has taken a hiatus for the first time in recent history because of the coronavirus pandemic. Let me know the next time we're gonna do a set change. Anyway, and many of the city's festivals celebrate Milwaukee's rich and diverse history, and that's why we've decided to celebrate them during our 430 newscast each Tuesday and Friday this summer. So I like this idea. Let's take a look at some of the cultural festivals that would have taken place so far this summer. In June, the 40th annual Polish Fest was supposed to kick off the cultural festivals on the Summerfest grounds. Yes, the following week was supposed to be the 55th annual Greek festival, which is always sponsored by the Annunciation Greek Orthodox Church at the State Fair grounds. And just last weekend, people were supposed to be celebrating French culture with Bastille days. I'm thinking of all the good calories and food I would have missed during all of those uh, great festivals. Now let's imagine festival season as we know, is a big draw to the city. Yes, Milwaukee's tourism industry hit especially hard by this pandemic. Claire Cohen in from Visit Milwaukee joining us now. Thanks for joining us for this special. Let's talk about this. We've seen a lot of major festivals canceled, but how many have actually and who have just decided to postpone their festivals this year? Um, well, I mean, just about everyone has fully canceled. They are not happening. Um, and I think as far as postponement, I mean, the wonderful thing about our ethnic festivals and street festivals is that we can count on them coming back every year. So um, I believe most are planning to come next year. But as far as I know, there are not any happening this summer. Uh, Claire, while these events are so much fun for the people who live here and work here and the visitors, it is a big economic impact for the city and the state. Have you been able to look at what impact COVID-19 has had by canceling all these events? What has been the economic impact? Well, um, it's hard to know the exact number. And um, I mean, we do know that it's the number is in hundreds of millions for the events across the city. Um, we do know that all of the ethnic festivals in a normal year bring maybe around 70 or over million um, per year combined. This is excluding the really big festivals, the state fairs and the summer fests. Um, so we know it's in the multiple millions that Milwaukee, it's small businesses um, and its people are losing when each individual festival is canceled. All right, thanks, Claire. We appreciate you joining us again from Visit Milwaukee. Of course. The first Festa Italiana was held on the Summerfest grounds back in 1978 in the month of August. Not only did the festival unite the Italian community here, but the food, the entertainment, and the exhibits also attracted people from multi ethnic backgrounds. And joining us now is Rose Ann Fritsch, Vice President of the Italian Community Center, along with Sister Mary Louise, who is the Mass Committee. Thanks for coming on. Thank and you. as we said earlier, thank, thank you, you both for, for being us. here. Milwaukee has such a rich, diverse ethnic community. Can you give us a, a little background <laughs> about the Italian Americans who call Milwaukee home and the role of the Italian Community Center? Well, the Italian Community Center was started to have a meeting place. In the past, our churches were our focal point, and that's where all of our societies came out of. And then all the individual societies would meet, and that was the socialization for the immigrants. Um, once that started to disband, there was a group of people that came together in 78 that decided that they wanted to bring that back. We had lost Our Lady of Pompeii Church, which was very important to us, and therefore the associated feast days. And so that is what Festa came out of. Sister Mary Louise, Catholicism is very important to Italian culture and people. Talk about the role it plays in the festival. Well, the mass is the, um, 
the main focus of FESTA. Mm. And without it, it, it just doesn't um, complete FESTA festivities. So, you know, we really look forward to the mass and the choir and the celebrant and all that the mass has to offer. So in one way, we're really disappointed that this year we could not celebrate the mass. Yeah, it really is a part of the culture, but uh, I imagine you're already thinking about 2021, right? Oh, Absolutely. yes. Wait. <laughs> yes, we do have uh, the celebrant that we were supposed to have this year. We plan on using next year. So we'll just have to see how it all plays out and works out. Sounds good. Great talking with you, ladies. And of course, you can find more information about the Italian Community Center and the services that they offer on our website at tmj4.com. Just head to the link section. What's a festival without entertainment? Well, years after, or year after year, that is, Festa Italiana brings a stellar lineup of singers, musicians, and dancers. Up next, we're gonna have a live performance. All right, we are celebrating Italian culture on what would have been the first day of Festa Italiana at the Summerfest grounds. And here's a fun fact for you about Italy. Did you know what the colors of the Italian flag represent? Well, three virtues, hope, faith, and charity. So let's talk more about Festa Italiana, which is known for its entertainment from singers to musicians and the dancers. And we have dance director Mark DeSantis joining us now. He also has members of the dance troupe, a small member or two of the festival. Thanks, who come year after year. Yes, hi, thank you. Tell me the name of the group we have behind us. Yeah, this is Dominic back here. Dominic is six, and then we have Vinny here, who's four years old. They're third generation members of our dance group. And a little background about the group. Sure, yeah, Tradizioni Viventi, or what translates as living tradition. Um, we've been in existence since about 1945, when some of the immigrants coming over from the same part of Italy decided that they needed a good way to keep a sense of home in their new environment. Um, for the first 20 years or so, they didn't actually do any dancing. Um, for the next 20 years or so, they actually only did a single dance. Um, but today we have a repertoire of about over 50 dances and a group that consists of over 80 members between our children's and adult dance groups. Well, Mark, it looks like Dominic and Vinny are ready to do some dancing for us. Can you <laughs> let them go to it? All right. <laughs> Let's get Mark, they are precious, and seeing them continuing with their culture and heritage is also a blessing. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and sharing your culture and your family with us. Thank you. But before we go to break, give them a high five for us. Yes, it's still hot outside, so please be careful. Make sure you take a lot of water. Brian Goddard will be back with his forecast to detail all we need to know this weekend. We've been talking about Festa Italiana. Italy is very mountainous and has some rough terrain. Here's another fun fact about the boot-shaped country. Did you know Italy has more volcanoes than any other country in Europe? And almost four-fifths 
of its landscape is made up of mountains or hills. We are getting ready to experience another stretch of heat and humidity this weekend. And we can't get help but remember how warm it was last year for the start of Festa Italiana. Our Lauren Linder reports. The bands are marching, the music's playing, and the food, oh, the food. Festa Italiana is off to a strong start, except... Too hot! It's a scorcher out there, but nine-year-old Kylan Mern is finding a way to stay cool. It feels good. From mist fans and tents. This is perfect. To splash pads. <laughs> Feeding the heat isn't too difficult at the Summerfest grounds. Even Milwaukee County Transit lent its bus so people could chill in the AC. And officials are allowing people to bring in their own water bottles. This heat can be very serious, so yeah, I'm glad. For Megan Zanin, a dancer with the Italian Dance Group of Milwaukee, it doesn't help that her uniform includes wearing lots of clothes, but she says they don't overwork anyone. We do like an hour-long set, so we all take breaks throughout the show. We make sure that no one does too many dances. The thing is, there's just something about this festival that draws a crowd. This is the best food of all the festivals. This is the largest festa italiana in North America. It's got premier grounds, premier venue. No other city can compare with it. Some hot weather wasn't going to stop them because they know we'll be back in a tundra before we know it. We're in God's country here right now. This is the heartland. This is Wisconsin. So we have four seasons just like God designed them. But sometimes they all come in one day. Sitting in traffic and... Or TV. Oh, hi, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> I'm here. I hear beeping in my ear. I'm sorry. Uh, we see. <laughs> we see. I, I'm sorry. I hear beeping in my ear. We have temperatures in the mid to upper 80s today. It's about 10 degrees warmer than yesterday. And we're just. I'm, I'm breaking a sweat just standing here because the dew points are up as well. Heat advisory in effect for tomorrow from 1 until 8. 103. 98 to 103 tomorrow. That's in the shade. You're out in the sun. It's going to feel a whole lot worse than that. The planner for tomorrow, uh, you're looking at 73 to start the morning off, 93 by the afternoon. The only saving grace tomorrow is that I'll have a southwest wind at 15 to 25. Whew, it's going to be sweaty. Current temperatures, we're in the 80s. Milwaukee's not reporting for some reason. Come on. Uh, temperatures tomorrow will be in the lower 90s lower 90s across southeastern Wisconsin. So that is just a taste of what you're about to get for tomorrow. Uh, we are seeing a severe weather outlook uh, with severe risk to our north, the, an enhanced risk up in Minnesota because they are seeing some nasty weather uh, off to the west up around Fargo. That is actually going to hold together and move into northern Wisconsin overnight tonight, probably after four in the morning, and cause some severe damage up there with some high winds. Uh, look at the dew points. They are back into the 70s at 74 in Des Moines. That is here for for tomorrow. The dew points way up there for the weekend. So it's not just the heat, it is the humidity, and that puts those heat index over 100 degrees. We get a little bit of a break on Monday, and the dew point starts inching back up on Tuesday. There are those storms overnight tonight making their way through across the northern part of the state. We'll just get a few clouds. The rain pretty much has been taken out of the forecast for tomorrow. And then we could see some more thunderstorms Saturday night into Sunday morning. Uh, and those could affect us here in southeastern Wisconsin before 10 a.m. Then the rest of Sunday is fine. Tonight, we are in the mid-70s and steamy. Tomorrow, lower 90s. That's in the shade. The heat index, 103. Seven-day forecast, 89 on Sunday. A little bit cooler because uh, of some cloud cover from those morning storms. And then we'll cool down to 84 on Monday. Hey, that's a 79 with a few showers on Tuesday and 81 on Wednesday. Just a two-day heat wave. We can handle it, but just be cautious, especially tomorrow afternoon. All right, Brian, stick around for this. You want to see this. Here's some food for thought. We're going to go through a few dish dishes and see if you can tell us if they are an American or Italian dish. Okay, so this should be some fun. You ready? Go. Yeah, the first one is... Uh, crowd favorite for sure. We're talking about pizza. Is this an authentic Italian dish or was it invented in America? You better know this one. Pizza was invented in Napoli around 1860 mm -hmm. and is probably one of the most popular Italian exports. Okay, what about spaghetti and meatballs? Totally Italian, right? Obviously, as Italian as it gets. Well, nope. This dish was invented in America. Italians eat meatballs on their own. 
but it's delicious nonetheless, right? Yeah, now, and my Italian mom has good meatball <laughs> recipes. So. Yeah, so now to something sweet. This is my favorite, cannolis. This one may be a trick question though, Charles. Cannolis are Italian pastries that are originating on the island of Sicily and are today a staple in Sicilian cuisine. Yeah, the bottom line is they're good. Yes, and what's Festa Italia? Italiana without a cannoli eating contest. Well, we've recruited a few co-workers to participate. We'd like to thank Squirt of Tip. Oh, I can't even say this one. Shortino's Bakery ah, on, Brady, on Street. Brady Street for providing these sweet treats. All right, so you guys are going to have about a minute here to eat <laughs> as many cannolis as you can. You're very lucky that Brian Goddard, yeah, hold them up there. You're very lucky Brian Goddard's not participating in this. How many's on the plate? Uh, the winner, by the, day, uh, by the way, will get a week off. Oh, wait, I didn't clear that with management, so. <laughs> All right, here we go. Are you ready? Get set. Manja. I want to know how many do they get? Five. There's five there? Okay. Where's the water? We only water? got about a minute here, know. right? Or how much longer we got here, Christina? It's hard to eat a lot of cannolis, right? It is, but I like Dan's steady steady move he's just you know kind Consistent. of taking it in yep that was one down he's got one that that's the sign for one how much longer we got here 30 seconds maybe 30 seconds guys okay we got 30 seconds to go here uh you know the hard part <laughs> about this is we're watching them eat these things I, and i'd rather be having a few myself here you Shannon. and me i pray that there are like two left for us on the side yeah don't eat them all we do want to enjoy them as well so dan's got all right, two. Dan, you got one down or two down? One and a half. One and a half. One and a half. <laughs> one and a half. Okay. So are we Jody, ready to declare? What, are you doing? what do we got here? Everybody's had one. Who's done two? Just still on one here. All right, D ah. Man, D Dan Seelan is the winner for the cannoli eating contest live <laughs> on TV, a first ever at TMJ4. <laughs> Congratulations giving parents a resource and a tool to talk about this challenging topic in a colorful, illustrated way. A children's book that's much more than just a story tonight, how it aims to help kids and parents cope with schools, changes, and all the changes happening during the pandemic that's new at five. And as we said, Festa Italiana will return to the Summerfest grounds in 2021. All this summer, though, we will be highlighting the different ethnic festivals that have been canceled due to the coronavirus. Just to make sure you tune in Tuesday to see which one is next. Yeah, and Chan, I know we're going to have some fun with this, uh, but it's really been something that I know the community, the city, the state has been missing. These festivals, they really are an important part of who we are. I'll be wearing my uh, polo next week, too. Yeah, we still got more shows to talk about all these other festivals. By the way, we're going to get a check of the top stories and your local.